Oklahoma Gardening is a production of the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the land-grant mission of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University, dedicated to improving the quality of life of the citizens of Oklahoma through research-based information. Southwood Landscape and Garden Center, Tulsa's source for great gardens, southwoodgardencenter.com and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping to keep Oklahoma green and growing. Today on the Best of Oklahoma Gardening, we'll be revisiting three of our favorite home gardens. First up, host Casey Hinches visits with a landscape designer who has created a beautiful garden at his retirement residence. In Atoka, Oklahoma, we stroll through a wonderful home landscape with a bold color palette. And in contrast, our final stop is in Oklahoma City at an eloquent garden with subdued colors and a profusion of textures. John Snelter, who is a senior that lives at the Reading Senior Center. And John is a landscape architecture graduate from OSU back a few a few years ago. A few years ago. <laughs> but John, you've been doing horticulture for quite a few years as a career. Mm -hmm. um, and now that you're retired, it's like all habits. You can't break them, right? It's impossible. <laughs> so you have a really nice garden here. What well, was here well, when you well, showed some. up? Uh, oh, this shrub and that shrub. Okay. And that's all. And so you the, the put first year I put pots around them. And how long have you been living here? Six and a half years. Wow. And then the second year I decided to just well the second year, the uh, ground supervisor here donated a bunch of these timbers, oh. and that's when the beds started getting built, <laughs> and that's when I started buying plants. Very uh, nice. It's been fun. It has been a lot of fun. And there's one Rebecca down here that really grabs my eye. Do you mind telling us a little bit about it? Uh, that's Rebecca Cherry Brandy. Uh, and it is, I think, a relative of Gloriosa daisies. Okay. Okay. Um, rather than uh, Black Eyed Susans. Wow. But um, uh, it's a real pretty little cultivar, and it was an impulse buy, <laughs> uh, and it seems to be doing real well. So I like it very much. So you have a black and blue salvia next mm -hmm. to your uh, clematis here. Yes. The yes. colors of those are very nice together. I like blue, um, I, and you'll notice there's a lot of blue in the garden. Uh, and I started with this plant. Uh, it's been in the ground five years, mm -hmm. and it just keeps getting bigger every year. I, it would take over the bed if I would let it. And it and can be a little marginal the further north you go in Oklahoma. That's but, true. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Um, uh, we've been real lucky with it, but it, you'll notice it's on the south side of the building, that's too. True, true. And so is my friend Janice's. <laughs> so that's how we've gotten away with okay. it so far. Uh, the Clematis has only been there since last year. Really? And it's really done well. It creeped across the top of the holly last summer uh -huh. and put out five or ten blooms. And then somebody gave me that... Uh, trellis and boy it's just shot up that trellis. It has, it has. Mm -hmm. it's, it mm -hmm. really lifts it up to display those flowers yeah, it did. Yeah it did. So you have a few tropical containers, you take those in in the winter time? I yeah, think? I've got a big table in front of the okay. living room window and they all go there. Get full sun and oh, absolutely. The south absolutely. side. And this hibiscus here, it looks pretty happy on the corner. This was bought the first summer I was here. It's the first plant I bought. For this whole garden, oh, okay. and uh, everybody wants cuttings off of it because it's so dark red, um, and uh, I, I don't give them cuttings off of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one plant they can't have. <laughs> <laughs> it's your signature plant. Huh? Yes, yeah. Well, and you have even more in the backyard. Shall we go take a look at that? Sure, absolutely. John, you have a really nice shade garden back here, and. It's Being been, a designer, you know about colors and textures. It looks like you've really played it up here. Well, I learned this from a lady named Beth Chato, who uh, is an English gardener, and her, her one piece of advice was don't design with flowers. Design for color and form and texture 
in the foliage. Okay. And then let flowers the are fleeting, right? Flowers are fleeting, yeah. and the foliage is all season long. Um, you've got a loosestrife right here. Goose, you... Gooseneck loosestrife. Okay. It's Lysomachia clethroides. And um, it's a really great perennial. If you put it out in full sun in good soil, it's going to spread like crazy. Mm -hmm. But if you put it in semi-shade, even in good soil, it's going to be much more restrained. And it's real easy to contain its spread. So one way to contain it is to yeah, <laughs> put yeah. in a little more shade, right? Yeah, that's right. That's so right. you have several ferns around here. Can you tell us about some of the ferns that you've got? Uh, yeah, that one over here and this one right here are both Tokyo wood ferns. Okay. That's Dryopteris tokyoensis, and then that's Japanese painted right, fern. Right, right. And this little uh, hosta. That's called blue mouse ears. Mm -hmm. It's just so uh, cute. It almost, I mean, it's about the same size as your ajuga. Yeah. And you don't think of a hosta no. being like a no, ground cover. Not at all. Uh, and it has the cutest blooms of any hosta I've got. Uh, just really good looking blooms, but you have to get on on your knees to see them. <laughs> and they're a white bloom? They are white and they have purple striations down okay. each petal. Oh, wow. And it's just, it really does look like it was designed by a scientist. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So down here you've got some uh, nice purple cucaras added in. And yep, I do. I, and I love this uh, silvery purple next to the blue hosta. Uh, silver gumdrop. The, That's what it is. The silver, the hucara is silver gumdrop. And the uh, hostas had some cream, and I like the two together too. Yeah. Really do. Now, uh, and this garden bed was here, but. Mm -hmm. The bed was here, it was absolutely empty. Okay. And I put off doing anything for two years because this is a silver maple. And as we all know, you can grow nothing under a silver maple. And then I just got stubborn and decided, what the heck? Well, it looks like you've proved us all wrong on that. Well, I proved the silver maple wrong. <laughs> That's about all. So, I think. so, John, we've kind of. Uh, gone around your um, apartment here, okay. but you've actually expanded a little bit, right? A little bit. Yeah. A so little. are you the resident gardener for the people around here? Uh, all too often. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure that they love your talents here and your skills. And, they um, do. We appreciate you sharing your garden with us. I really appreciate you coming by. Thank you. Thank you very much. Today we're visiting with, with Mrs. Emma Hill uh, in Atoka, Oklahoma. Uh, she has, uh, I, I've, I drive by uh, this area every day and, and just over the years I've, it continue, I've always admired this, this just very unique and fantastic garden and, and almost it's like an artwork. And so here today we're, we're, here, we're here to visit with, with, uh, with Mrs. Hill about this. So good morning. Yeah, good morning, how are you? you? My name's Emma Hill and yes. I want to show you my garden. I call this my weeping willow garden. And uh, I have uh, lilies and crepe myrtle trees. And this is a brick display I did. And I got them from a guy that, and I decided to make me a circle brick. And I do them, I painted my bricks in red and black because that's my favorite color. Yeah. And then up here I have, we can walk up here. And uh, this fountain right here was gave to me. A guy said he loved the way oh, be careful. He loves the way I do my yard. So he said I have a fountain. He might have had a little crack in it, but he gave it to me. And I told him, well, every time he passed by, he'll always have a reminder that this is that he gave yeah. this to yeah. me. And as you yeah. know, I painted it red and black as usual. Mm -hmm. And then we over here, this is where I call my weeping willow little garden. And I made these bricks display. Uh, these bricks right here come from my mother's home and she passed away, but I want to put them here to remind me of her and my father. And then I took and bought these and painted them up and I decorate them during Christmas time. Yeah. And then I, I take and do my pots and stuff yeah. and I do my tree, my chairs and lights. And, and, and then I have in my weeping willow tree, I have Christmas light drooping down yeah. 
and people just come by and love it. And this is a design I've, I kind of like a little living room. I do my candle, my chandelier up here, so people can see my little prison stuff on it. Yeah. And I love to decorate yeah. on them. Yeah. This and is like a pretty, I, if I can ask, this yeah. is a pretty, pretty extensive project. How long have you been working on this, on this garden? In, I've been in here about yard? 35 years, yes. and I've been working on. It. I had to stop okay. for a while because. I had surgery on my knee one time mm. and then I had brain surgery. So I had to stop for a while. Mm. But my granddaughters and my daughter have helped yeah. me lift stuff and mm. things. But I constantly just yeah. keep working at it. Yeah. Kind of get the idea you like the color red. That's my favorite color, yeah. red. Oh. Yeah. I had, uh, when I was a younger girl, I went to a friend's house and she had Mexican red and black furniture. And I looked at them and I said, well, whenever I get my own place, Mine's gonna be red and black, and I just love yeah. the color red. Yeah. It's it's smooth in color to me. Uh -huh. I just love it. And every time yeah. I see something in red, I just go for it. These roses right here, they would give them to me. Uh, they would buy me roses from the uh, flower shop, and I said, no, I don't want none from the flower. I want some I can grow and look at them for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And then they start buying me all these mm -hmm. roses. And I, in the morning times, I come down here, and like yeah. when they die off, uh -huh. I pop them off, and a lady told me that's what makes them grow and fill out real better. And I love cactus, and I do the cactus, yeah. and I got little lilies and uh, canyons all up in here. And uh, we collect, I collect those little rocks in that stand, and mm -hmm. now my grandkids, when they go somewhere and they see them, they'll pick them up and bring them home to me. <laughs> I wonder, do, do you ever get people that drive by just stop and ask, yeah. ask about you? It all almost looks like a little park here. Yeah. A lot of them have asked me, could they come and sit under my weeping willow trees and read a book? Really? Yeah, and uh, a lot of them come and uh, ask me, how did I come by making these designs? Mm -hmm. But it's, if I see something, it's a potential. I just got to have it. And yeah. then uh, over here at this wheelbarrow, my husband was laughing at me. It broke down, and, uh, and I got tired of trying to fix the plants. So I just mm -hmm. said, well, I'm going to take it okay, and bring wow, it to my that yard. Sure is interesting. So I painted mm -hmm. it red and yeah. put a little polka yeah. dots on it. Uh -huh. And then I did my cactuses. Mm -hmm. And this used to belong to my uncle. He passed away uh, all in here. And I said, I'm gonna, this will be in remembrance of him because he would always tease me about that yeah. cactus. Okay. And it blooms yeah. purple. And the rest okay. of them bloom mm -hmm. yellow. And so yeah. I decided I want to yeah. yeah. put it there. And when they give me yeah. something, I'll, Tell them that's going to be their name. Yeah, yeah. Everything, <laughs> but, what I notice here, everything is so so nicely balanced and you know, all just fits together. Yeah. You know? Well, you don't believe it, but a lot of this I didn't change. I didn't mm -hmm. move around. <laughs> I didn't do things. But on so. these eucas plants right here, you know, they flare out. Uh -huh. But I take and I clip them with scissors mm -hmm. to make them stand up like right. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, yeah. it's a lot of work, but I love to do it because I'm always in the yard doing things. Yeah. How big a crew do you have that helped to take care of all this? Mostly it's me. And like I got these tractor tires, I was seeing tires one day and I said, I can do something with them tires. So I took and painted them and then I put the little polka dot in two-tone paint, mm -hmm. I did those. And like in this, well I had to have my daughter and them help me with the pots because the pot was so heavy. Mm -hmm. I took and painted these yeah. Yeah. and I had them just plain white and red. Mm -hmm. And then I kept looking at them one day and I said, oh, I see something else I can do. So I started putting the polka dots yeah. on them. Yeah. And I thought, well, ladybugs, I yeah. call them. Yeah. Okay. I really like your windmill there. That, is, that just kind of adds, you know, there's some con continuous movement there. Yeah, thank shows you. when the breeze my is husband, blowing. My birthday was last month and I had been talking about, I wish I could find a wheel, yeah. windmill. Mm -hmm. And I seen one up there by Ethan Allen and a pastor. Oh, <laughs> and I said, I wish I know who owned it. <laughs> and he said, but you ain't going to get it. That and then was, one day he one, said, guess what? I said, what? I got you a windmill. And I said, you serious? He said, yeah. And I come around here and he had it laying over there by my dumpster deals. And time I seen it, I got it up and I started painting it. <laughs> I said, I have to paint yeah. this. And I did the blades in black and white yeah. and red because when they turned, yeah. I said, oh God, that looks good. So you're, you're both you're both, you're an artist with a green thumb. Yeah. That's a wonderful combination. <laughs> yeah, it is. Because yeah. I love to paint, I draw, and I have decorated for churches, and I have used mm -hmm. to do weddings okay. and stuff, okay. and I love to decorate. When somebody said decorate to me, yeah. I'm on it. I got to mm -hmm. go do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you taking well, your time you. to show us your garden, well, and a lot of people, I think, are going to enjoy seeing well, this. I think 
everybody so, for and, thinking my yard uh, looks nice. Okay. Because well, I feel like I am doing something you. right yeah, now. Thank you again. Because <laughs> I love to yeah. decorate and garden work. Mm -hmm. Marquette Clay and one of the things that draws you in is not only these boxwoods but this door Marquette Hello. I mean well, thank you. I, you have thank a you lovely coming. yeah you have a lovely yard here that's just nestled in right off the street can you tell us a little bit about the yard first of all uh, you've got a lot of greens and whites and things like that it's been in development I started probably about 2008 and did all the stonework and mm -hmm. um, the steps the pathway the walls and then in 2012, when you set the door, yeah. I was being featured in Southern Living Magazine. So they picked out the color for the door and they asked me if I would paint it that color. And I said, sure, I will, but I'm going to paint it back once they leave. Right. But, you know, that was 2012, then I still have the green door. Hey, it so looks, I love it. It looks great I here. And, and you've got a lot of shades of green, so it just kind of plays that up a little bit. That's why I start loving it more and more because I love the different shades of green, especially when new foliage comes on mm -hmm. or just the light shades and the dark shades. And I love mixing white with it. So it's just, it was a perfect match. Yeah. And you, you've mixed in just pops of purple around that I really like. It's a little bit of color without going into the pinks and all the other colors, yeah. uh, co you know, with the color palette. So I always mix a little purple. A well, little purple and the different shades of green and yellow. Yeah. It's not really bright yellow, but the chartreuse colors yeah, are yellow. Yeah, and I like that you have a, a variegated elderberry behind us here. Um, we've got a lot of yews because... Even, I love the plum yews. Even though there's some sun here, you're kind of shaded. I've been really surprised how well that these were very, this was a really good one at first, mm -hmm. but then I planted these on this side and they have done even better. And they're on the north facing of your house, north so they get a side. little bit of protection that way. Um, we've got a nice darker foliage uh, elderberry here on the corner yes, too. The, I believe it's the black lace. Okay. And I, I just love this carriage driveway of <laughs> yours. We've got to talk about this. Was oh, this here originally? It or? was not here. Uh, actually, nothing was here. Nearly all the plant material you'll see on the whole property really? was planted after I moved in. But it was just a play on the old driveway where you would naturally make a pathway with the tires. Yeah. And you would have the grass left in the middle. But I put a little steel edging around it and kind of reformed it a little bit. Yeah, give it a little bit of a modern twist to a that. A little bit of a modern twist. Well, it's going through that period of time right now. It's being overseeded. It was a hot summer. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, this just leads me. Can we go check out your backyard? We can. Let's do it. Let's do it. Marquette, this is just a beautiful oasis. It's, it feels like an extension of your yard, your home. You got it right. This is my outside room. The back windows of my bedroom and the yeah. kitchen face out. So it's just like having an extra room. Well, let's first talk about the shade garden here. You've got some Nellie R. Stevens above us that have grown pretty large and they're providing you with a lot of shade, but I love... They have grown extremely large and quickly. <laughs> <laughs> they do that, but I love the oasis here with the, the different mixes of uh, colors. Is this the silver dragon liriope? That... Silver dragon liriope, you have autumn fern, there's wood fern, there's Persian, Persian shield, shield, which is a, yeah. you know, annual, but then there's hostas, other variegated hostas mixed in, some different grasses. Again, the purple, white, and, and yeah. shades of green theme. That's about all the color you'll find in my garden. Which, which is really, <laughs> it creates this kind of cooling, relaxing place to come out and enjoy. It looks like you might enjoy your time out here. I really do. This is a great place to entertain. I don't entertain as much as I should, and every time friends see it, they go, why are we not having something? <laughs> but, you know... It's pretty hot, so yeah. it's a great it's a great place. Uh, 
but I typically wait till early fall and try to get in some parties then. Well, it's very nice with the fire pit and stuff like that. Uh, um, let's talk a little bit about the detail you've added in. You've got a beautiful trough here with some succulents. It's a large wooden trough and I plant it every year. Uh, the box, this little boxwood has been in here probably about five years and other elements I put in and take out and just, it changes. Yeah. Well, that, that's part of the fun of gardening, right? Oh, that's always the fun. So you have a lot of containers over here. Um, this is definitely a container garden. Every single plant you see in this area is in a container. And because it moves around and it's uh -huh. always different, I never bothered to irrigate it. Okay. So I am the irrigator of these <laughs> pots, and you know that's a lot of work. So you bring the hose around? Or I the, bring the, the hose around, around and keep it all watered. Well, you've got a lot of annuals mixed in too. Are, are, you're obviously a perennial and annual gardener. Can you tell us Most a little definitely. bit about why you choose to plant some annuals as well? Well, you, sometimes you won't get those colors mm -hmm. with perennials. And so it's just a fun thing to mix in. Yeah. Annuals are always fun, as long as you don't overdo it. Well, and I saw you've got the cat whiskers, again, the Persian shield, um, some different tropical succulents and things like that. and have to mention this little centerpiece here that's beautiful oh thank you i planted it originally a year ago mm -hmm. last for last summer and when it came around this year some things survived other things didn't i kept it in the greenhouse this winter and so i just plugged in and that's the fun thing about right. succulents a lot of times with a large container you can just start over but a lot of times you can just take what you have yeah and intermix new succulents. Yeah, to it. Let, kind of let them define their own boundaries exactly. and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So we're under a beautiful uh, arbor structure, and I know <laughs> it's been here for a little while, but I love the chandelier and the fact that you're using it to grow the woolly morning glory the on. The woolly morning glory, I love it. This is one of the favorites to touch, right? It <laughs> is. It is a favorite. It's picked up at one of our local nursery people in Stillwater. Mm -hmm. And it's just a great, great vine. It's definitely one for foliage. Um, definitely one for foliage. But if it does bloom, it's going to have a purple flower for you. Sure, and Jack <laughs> may climb that beanstalk. Yeah. You never right. know. So a few other trees I want to highlight is your, your chocolate um, mimosa. Chocolate mimosas are great. And you also have, it looks like a dwarf uh, lace bark elm or, or Chinese elm that it's yes, known Chinese as. Yes, Chinese elm, and as you see, it's not too dwarf anymore. <laughs> the leaves are still very so, yeah, small. Yeah, it's got a smaller leaf so on it. That's where it kind of comes from, is a very small leaf on it. But for the most part, it's turned into a nice large tree. Well, Marquette, your backyard and your front yard, too, are just beautiful. And thank you for opening up your, your home to oh, us so well, that we can take a coming. look at it. Thank you for Thank you. beautiful shade garden. It's huge. Um, and I want you to tell me a little about the history about where it began and what all you have done to make it become this. Well, when we first got here, this was just a, a grove of soap berries. And uh, the old homestead uh, left a lot of debris and uh, old sheds in here. And so we had to clear all that out. That took actually a couple years. And then Every, every year it would just grow with cheat grass. It'd be three, four feet mm. tall, nothing you could do about it. And I'd have to mow that. So of course, what better way to stop mowing is plant a garden. Right. And uh, so we started at one end and amending the soil, just like on the south side, we had a, a lot of trouble with the, the red clay. And so we started planting some ground cover, some vinca, mm -hmm. which uh, was aggressive enough to finally take off. We have some creeping euonymus that's also a great ground cover. And, uh, and then we started creating the beds. And uh, again, more plumbago is a good ground cover. We have, uh, uh, we wanted some evergreens, so we had the yews. And then I wanted again, more walkways, because I think they're, they're, they're good design and style, 
without being too formal. Mm -hmm. There's really some beautiful structures out here. And um, can you tell me a little bit about those? Well, we uh, completed this uh, walkway circuit. Uh, so mm -hmm. we wanted some additional interest. So I had a little raised uh, wooden walkway there. And uh, mm -hmm. over uh, a little bit further on, we have a Japanese uh, bridge that I, I built with mm -hmm. a wooden boardwalk. We're going to continue to do more and more of that throughout uh, the garden here. I really appreciate you taking me around. This is beautiful. It's huge. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> it's fun showing it off. Next week will be all about food. We will select cool season vegetables for the garden, visit a couple of unique farms growing local produce, and look in on some of the hunger fighting programs of the Food Bank of Eastern Oklahoma. We hope you join us then for more of the best TV you'll grow to love. To find out more information about show topics, as well as recipes, videos, articles, fact sheets, and other resources, including a directory of local extension offices, be sure and visit our website, oklahomagardening.okstate.edu. And we always have great information, answers to questions, photos, and gardening discussions on your favorite social media as well. Join in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find this entire show and other recent shows, as well as individual segments on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And tune in to our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel to watch segments from previous hosts. Oklahoma Gardening is produced by the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. The Botanic Garden at OSU is home to our studio gardens, and we encourage you to come visit this beautiful Stillwater Jewel. We wish to thank our generous underwriters, Southwood Landscape and Garden Center, and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Additional support is provided by Pond Pro Shops, Greenleaf Nursery and the Garden Debut Plants, and the Oklahoma Horticultural Society.